What's up? This is a Bush Gardens junkie, and well, yeah, of course, we're at Bush Gardens. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's just gonna be a little bit hot day. It's uh, Friday, the 20th of August. Yep, August. And we're gonna head in, see how it is. Yeah, it's a Friday. The schools are back uh, in session, so. Uh, and, and people are at work, of course, so we're going to see how this works out today. Uh, I know Friday the 13th, last week, it was actually kind of dead. So, I'm going to see what we can uh, get accomplished today. Well, we can't come to Bush Gardens without checking out Iron Wazi. And uh, even though last week Neil said there's an announcement coming soon, we have yet to wait for that announcement. But uh, uh, I'm not going to say any rumors, but there's a possibility it may open for Hollow Scream. Shh. You didn't hear that from me though. So, we are going to just take it easy today. Yeah, the work walls are still up for Iron Gwazi. So, not gonna open anytime real soon, but it would be nice to get the announcement soon. Here are the prices if you're looking to come here for the beer fest. You got eight items for $50, 12 items for $65, and for past members, you get an additional three items for that same price of a 12 item sampler. That's right, 15 items for $65. And if you are wondering, the beer fest opens at noon. Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to October 31st. Right here, we have the bourbon tasting. Oh, and we have some beautiful, beautiful birds. Yeah, let's see if they want to say good morning today. Good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hi. Are we shy today? We little shy today? Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning, guys. There's a little Joey. Hi, little Joey. And we got to get some food, huh? Stop chewing on the tree. Why are you chewing on the tree? Okay, we're going to go ahead and focus in on the white ones back there. 
they're very playful hopping around you got uh, the peanut gallery speaking up back over here Hello. And then of course, we have to check in on our uh, on our swans that are growing up. Very fast. Very fast. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know if you can still call them signets when they're this old. No. <laughs> they're called different. Alrighty. So, um, one thing that uh, we did notice when we were going by Iron Wazi is there's normally a scare zone there. Uh oh. Hold that thought. For the pink chickens! Thank you, Dan. I think I'm gonna steal that one from you. Uh, yeah, that's uh, referring Dan from Midway Mayhem. He always calls them pink chickens and uh, it's stuck. So uh, I'm gonna steal that one from you, Dan. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, um, on about Iron Wazi, there was normally during Call of Scream, a scare zone like right in front and that has actually been moved so uh, take that however you want to um could it be possibly hollow scream will be announcing an iron wazi opening we're gonna try to away. dig deeper we're gonna dig real deep don't give it away we're gonna get dig real real deep and find out Stay tuned. There's also normally a scare zone right here. But I don't see. Oh. There you go. Yeah, that's scary. There's another shadow hiding back there. And a shadow of a... Okay. I thought it was a moose or something, but no, nope, not a moose. And here we are, coming up to Laurie's Landing. The lorikeets though, the lorikeets are on vacation and uh, from another youtuber uh, supposedly they're closed down for a while for some possible refurbishment but I kind of think they were just recently down for some refurbishment but let's go ahead and take a look and see what is going on here Definitely looks empty. There is no water. All the ropes are gone. Looks like they cut down uh, some trees in there. Yeah. They cut down a lot of trees. Uh, I 
wonder if there was a possibility that the trees may have had a disease and or, or something. Well, inquiry minds want to know, and we'll try to get down to the bottom of this uh, little mystery also. Come back here. It, it's a hot one today. Oh, very hot. I've already wiped off sweat like a new dozen times. And uh, here we go. We're ready to get wet. Yay! It's hot. There she is up there. Uh, uh. And it doesn't look like anybody's on it. Yes. But after we get wet, we'll be going on it. In three, two, one. Yeah. That was cold. Woo, that felt good. Now. Is there another one coming? No, it looks like no. It. well, we got the backside wet. We were hoping another one would come so we could get the front side wet too, but we'll have to get on and cool down that way. Yes, this place is normally closed. And then, uh, usually for Hollow Scream, they put some items in there. And please sit upright, hold on yeah. and brace for a sudden slowdown at the bottom of the hill. Thank you. I don't know if you can still see it, but they still have those uh, things up for the lights for Christmas time. And there's no real cracks to see beyond this wall. Well, maybe right over here. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, there is no Halloween stuff getting ready over here. So the question is, where did that scare zone go? Yeah, it's supposed to be a scare zone. <laughs> and we don't know. There's no decorations, there's no Halloween, Hallow Scream stuff there yet. And, uh, uh, yep, the sky ride still closed. So we are on the log room. It is about 11.20. We already got splashed by Shikra. We already rode Shikra and Tigris. But it, it, it is a hot one today. And they're announcing boat 20 because we got a flag, I think, somewhere behind us. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna see how wet we can get. Yeah, notice uh, we put more weight up front, so the nose hopefully dives down and splashes us real good. Sudden slowdown at the bottom of the hill. Thank and tigers behind the tree. Yeah, 
if you see there, there's still the lights, but no hollow screen decorations. And our first drop. Ah! <laughs> Got a little wet there. That's a side splash. Here we go, rocking the boat. Oh. We're banging around a lot. Yeah, see, no hollow screen decorations. All right, now is our final approach to the big drop. See if we can get really wet. And the front of the shirt. get dirty again. I don't think they interact with them the way you think they do. Hi there, buddy. Hi. <laughs> he wasn't sleeping. <laughs> With his dreads? Yeah. <laughs> hey. I know you can hear that. You want to say hi? No? You're not going to turn around and say hi, huh? Do you remember which one had all the dreads? Okay, I'm gonna bring you some food. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I thought only dogs did that. <laughs> oh.
Yeah, he does. Oh, look at that. He got some broccoli. Hi. Hi. I bet you that broccoli would be better with some cheese on it. <laughs> yeah. Couple of gorgeous redheads. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. Big teeth. Yeah. Big teeth. Alrighty. Nice to see you guys and gals. Looks like he's gonna try to eat. Yeah, he's gonna try to grab one. As we uh, come out of the orangutan viewing area and in the Tiger Lounge, we are seeing some decorations around here for Hello Scream. Kind of looks like a pirate theme. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you guys haven't caught the announcement yet, the Bango Bistro will soon be a Chick-fil-A. It has finally been officially announced um, that we are going to get some chicken and fingers right here next to the Tiger Treasures. Yep. <laughs> so we got the Tiger Treasures, Tigers and Fingers. Not a good combination if you put the two together. I'm sure the Tigers will take your fingers away, so. Don't take the chicken fingers with the tigers. We're gonna go check out the tiger trail, see if we can find any tigers. Not to take our fingers, but just to see them. I would be trying to lay down in the shade too as much as I can. Shit, I'd be shoot. I would be playing in the water. I would try. Well, you know how cats are with water. Yeah, they don't like it, but Hi. 
Hi. Hi there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> He's just resting. And we're gonna go ahead and move along because another tiger is sitting on top of the pop-up. Hey, there it is. Yeah. And there he is. I don't know, there's some uh, interesting uh, decorations going on around here. This kind of looks like the stuff that they had at the, the kids area. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Falcon's Fury is uh, down at the moment. We're gonna hope to get that up and running soon. But here at the Midway, Oh, this is kind of what we call the midway. More hollow scream decorations. And the poor phoenix. Never gonna fly again. I don't know what exactly these boxes are for. Maybe they got some stuff hidden inside of them? No. Or possibly... Eh, possibly uh, something that somebody can jump out of. And this is why I call it the Midway. All the games. And of course, you know, as it being a hot day, we're gonna take, we, we, we gotta go on the river rapids. Yeah, hot sun. Blinded by the light. gonna get a suntan just sitting here. <laughs> my back.
gonna hit there and spin again. Yeah, no. This one's actually bouncing and spinning around a lot. Yes. Ow. There it is. And then somebody had to turn on the brakes. <laughs> We're still going backwards, so that's a good thing. Uh-oh. I don't think we're going to get the good part of this one. In here. Diet. 
And she writes all that down for every single animal and gives it to us. Now we can take that information and we can pack it all down into a little biscuit or pellet or, or kibble like you would give your dogs and cats. And we can just give that to our animals and be fine. It would meet all the nutritional needs that they have. But there's a problem with that. That's boring to eat the same thing for the rest of your life every day. So we like to, um, and it's also, well, it meets all the nutritional needs, it may not meet all of the behavioral needs or physiological needs or medical needs of each of our sloths. It doesn't take them into consideration as individuals. So what we do is we um, give them a wide variety of foods and vegetables that, that will meet those and other needs for our animals. If you guys want to come on in, feel free to sit down and hang out. We're actually talking about sloth nutrition right now. So I'm actually going to begin dividing this up into the three portions for our sloths. And Marie's going to tell you guys all a little bit about the behavioral needs, the medical needs, and the physiological needs of our three sloths, Harry, Mario, and Daisy. And before I begin, I, you know, I, I have three sloths here that I have to lay out food for, but I only, I only have two hands. Does anyone want to be my extra set of hands? If not, I'll, oh, we got a taker here. Yeah, you want to meet me over by the sink? We'll get started and you can help me weigh out some sloth food right over here. And like I said, Bree's going to tell you guys a little bit more about our superstar sloths. All right, as Devin said, these have to be all of those yep. needs. So the behavioral, the nutritional, and the medical needs. So we don't just want to give them something like this here that you see. This can be a good supplement to their diet. It will give them the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the things that they need. It is called an earthworm pellet, but it's going to be pretty boring. I feel like if I handed you a bowl of green beans for breakfast, lunch, dinner, every single day, we would really have fun with that, right? Even if it yeah. gave us our energy, made us happy, and you know. But another cool thing that we do is with our fruits and veggies, for the sloth specifically, we do something called a french fry cut. So does anybody have any ideas why we might cut the food like this? So they can grab it. Yes, exactly. Just so they can grab it because they have those nice long nails, right? So this helps them grab it. I couldn't imagine handing them an entire apple or an entire zucchini. That probably would take forever for them to eat. And this helps us with training as well. So when the keepers want to ask for a behavior, the animal can do it. And then they can give them this piece, munch on it, you know, a lot quicker than the whole piece of the fruit. And then they can go on to the next behavior. And that actually helps them do things like participating in their own healthy So, she was talking about we have Harry and Mario and Daisy here at Wish Gardens. We do have other sloths as well, but those are the ones that you'll see over at Animal Connections, if you guys have time to check that out later. <laughs> A couple of years ago, Daisy was actually pregnant, and the father was Mario, and they had cute little baby who went over to one of our other parks, another sea world over in San Diego. I'm not sure if you guys have ever visited over there. But when she was pregnant, the vets and the zookeepers worked together to actually get some ultrasounds right in her habitat. And the way that they did that was by using these French fry cut pieces of food. They would have her get situated on her tree and they would give her a piece while the vets would go through and do the ultrasound. And I kept it stress-free for the vets and for the keepers, as well as for Daisy, too. Another one of our sloths, Harry. So Harry's a special case for a sloth. <laughs> typically live for 15 to 20 years. Do you guys want to take a guess at how old Harry might be? I think he's 25. 25? He's older than 25. I heard another number out there. 40. He's about 42. So he's a pretty old man compared to that 15 to 20 years, right? So with Harry, he's actually a special case, like I said, because he's been on a few different talk shows, nighttime shows, he's met celebrities, and he's actually one of the sloths that really started the ambassador program for them. So he's a very important sloth here at Bush Gardens. But with him, his medical needs are a little different with him being older. His teeth aren't as good as they used to be when he was younger, so he gets pellets like Mario and Daisy do, but they're going to be a little bit softer. So they're going to be this jelly feeling. That way it's easier for him to eat, but he's still getting all of those vitamins and nutrients and minerals that they all need to do well. And we're talking about how they're weighing up the food here. It's really important to 
the way out the food to make sure you're getting those right amount of vitamins, nutrients, and minerals. But do you guys want to take a guess at how many times a week we weigh our sloths themselves? Three times a week, you think? That's a good guess. I think at least twice a day. You think twice a day? Is what you're going to say twice a week? Yeah? All right, well, actually, it would be once a week. And the day that they do it is when the sloths actually, when they poop. So sloths only poop about once a week. And it's because it's really dangerous for them. So when they use the restroom, they do have to come down from the trees. And they're not very good at being down on the ground. It's really dangerous and they're very vulnerable. So they'll come down that one time, and when they do, it's about 10 to 20% of their body weight. So then the keepers can weigh them that day and have a baseline to compare it to from all the other weights that they got. It's pretty crazy, all the different adaptations that animals have, right? Yeah. Once a week, Once a week, exactly. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. I know. I know. And you have to think too, I mean, we think of sloths as being pretty slow. Their metabolism is pretty slow, everything about them is, so it works for them. Not quite as much for us, but that's how it works for sloths. Yeah. Very That was uh, the Animal Care Center, and they were doing a uh, nutritional, um, talking about the nutrition for the sloths and how they have different things that they need to eat and stuff. And uh, as we're coming out and heading towards um, the train station and the uh, well, that's the animal care center. This is the, uh... yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, you made me lose my train of thought there. So we're heading to the Nairobi train station and gonna see the turtles. Uh, there, as you can see, there was some hollow scream decorations back there. Uh, yeah, we normally go that way, but this time we're gonna go this way. Because, oh, yep, yeah, more Halloween decorations. And uh, I see one. Now serving at yeah, I see him. He's in the tree. I see only one of them up in their trees. Don't see the other one. Unless he's hiding over here somewhere. Nope, not hiding here. I uh, got the one. Actually, they both look like they're underneath the tree there. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, we have a graveyard. All right, Animal Connections is next. Uh, I'm sure hoping these are not uh, gravestones of all the animals. <laughs> I said I hope it isn't. And the old church. Interesting that they put the church right here. I think I saw some of our friends. We're gonna go check out some of the, uh, the animal keepers, handlers, and ambassadors. Let's see if we 
can catch up with them. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Hi there. Yeah. Hi there. Just trying to get the bug. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hi. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah. 87. That Where's must it? be Karen. Mary. Or Mary. Yeah. Hi, Mary. Oh, hi. Hi there. Now, these are the lesser flamingos. And those are the Caribbean flamingos. And I think that's Mary trying to make up a lot of noise over there. So. Hi. Hi there. Look at that beautiful owl. Can't see it. Oh, that's a little owl. Wow. What? I'm getting a good shot of the owl. Where? Right there. A lizard? Yeah. Ah, yeah, An iguana. Iguana. <sighs> iguana and a sloth. Supposedly an armadillo, but I don't see the armadillo. Huh. Huh, and there's the echidna. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's inside its hide. Supposedly a sloth, but yeah, I don't see it. Unless it's over here. Uh, well, there's a couple of sloths over here. So. And a lemur.
All righty. I'm not sure if that's a, a nest, a little like a nesting box or a feed box or what that is, but. Oh, there it is. A bird's sitting in that little box way over there. And, ah, well, there's another box right here, too, but there's no bird in it. All right. Ah, crocodile. And, uh, our, our white-necked raven friend, I think, uh, that's Zuri over there. Hi, Zuri. You're not in the mood to say hi today, huh? Okay. And more lemurs. And yet I don't see them. They all be hiding. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't see any lemurs. Okay, usually there's uh, like three or four of them sitting there watching you as you walk by. And uh, here we come again to the grave site. Probably another scare zone for Hello Scream. Now, my question is, are those real crows? If they were, they would be making noise here. Those are not real. No, they're not real. <laughs> they certainly look like it when they're far away. Yeah, yeah, let's go check out the tuxedo birds. Well, they're all in the water. Except two over there in the corner. <laughs> well, campsite has not changed. I was expecting some uh, Halloween type of uh, decor here. So we'll have to check again. Maybe, maybe in a week or two, they'll start getting some Halloween decorations here. We did go through the Miami Reserve the wrong way, but... Oh well. Over here, by the alligators, we have some more decorations.
Ooh. And we got a voodoo shack over here. Oh, and something else back there. So the voodoo shack looks like it's gonna be, I don't know. It looks like some seats in there. This looks like it could be a special drink stand or something. Again, more more of the pirates theme going on around here. And there you go. There's a map and all the uh, vendors. And you notice this year, Beer Fest is all over the place. In the bird gardens. In Pantopia, Serengeti. And just for you. There you go. Folks, yeah, you're not mistaken. Cheetah Hunt is only 15 minutes, so for yeah, us, 10. it may be a walk on for us. Hello. So yeah, that was Samantha, and uh, she basically told us we can go on right now. We are going to the elevator. Ooh, it's open, it's open. <laughs> the sign out there says 10 minutes. Yes, the sign said 10 minutes. It said 15 before. Well, it said 15 and then it went down to 10. But, um, yeah. There is no line. One good way to judge how empty or how full the park is, just check out the wait time for Cheetah Hunt. Um, so far today, every the, the park has been quite empty. Uh, not that many people here during the day. Uh, then again, it is Friday, the school's back in session and people are at work. But uh, I think it's probably, uh, like close to two o'clock and uh, yeah uh, we just got on cheetah hunt and uh, it was 15 minutes okay and now I got to get out of cheetah hunt uh, so the wait time was 15 minutes then it went down to 10 minutes and we basically just walked on almost so uh, good judge of how the park is. If Cheetah Hut doesn't have a two hour wait, then the park is pretty much empty. <laughs> Other than that, if it's got a 10 minute. Yeah. She was saying if it was a Saturday or Sunday and it's only 10 minutes, you're good. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, Cheetah Hunt normally has about anywhere between 90 to 120 minutes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you can tell, it is pretty good without the weight. So we just hopped on Montu.
Yeah. And then this parking lot down here. The giraffe pretzel from the giraffe bar. Doesn't it look cute? Not anymore. Oh, and she took the head off. Thank you. She took the head off. <laughs> Cheat hunt is five minutes. Yeah. Friday's is the best day to go. Doesn't have the little weird <coughs> tail, so it's definitely not. Um, uh, I'm thinking it's Kitta. Kitta or Kitta? I don't know. <coughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It could be Moyo too, but Moyo is, I think, a little bit bigger. And let's just say the park went purple. Yeah, um, there were a few lightning. Oh, now I hear the thunder. So yeah, there was a few lightning strikes uh, to the south of us in Tampa. And uh, yeah, nice dark clouds. So uh, yeah, the park went purple. Uh, from what I gather, it was red and then purple. But basically what that means is no rides are running and uh, when it's red or purple, the park employees are supposed to seek shelter uh, or stay in shelter. So there's a chance we can get struck by lightning. Slim, but still a chance. As you can see, it's still empty, but I think it's gonna probably empty out even quicker now. We have clouds nearby. It did sprinkle a little bit and there was some thunder. So all the rides have been uh, stopped at the moment because there is lightning in the area. 
I hope you enjoyed this uh, little segment of the Bush Gardens Junkie this time. We are going to go ahead and call it a day since, uh, yeah, it's like 3.30, 4 o'clock, something like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're starting to get a little bit tired. Plus, without the rides being open and running, and with the rain uh, all over the place, um, yeah, it's uh, not much left to do. We can go check out an indoor show, but uh, pretty much everything is closed down.